Okay, so I completely rebuilt this circuit and I ran all the leads out here so I could clip different components onto them. And you know, I had a hunch earlier as well as a lot of the commenters on the last video that if we put some capacitance between these two points where I was touching to the ground, we could get this circuit to run. And I got my variable air capacitor here and uh, first tests are very promising. I believe this is going to work. I need to test it in a Faraday cage. I'm going to put this in a microwave to test it out. But let me just show you the effects. So energize the circuit here with a 9 volt battery and you can see it is running on. The only other thing it's connected to at this point, uh, oh, and you can see touching it, I really just messed up the capacitance on that by touching it. But what I really want to show is as I adjust the variable air capacitor here, you can see the lights, they kind of flash and get really bright. And if I bring it up all the way, I pretty much just suck the, uh, the circuit dry, but it's interesting, if I lower it back down, you can see them come back on very dimly now. That's just the residual voltage in that little electrolytic. So let me go ahead and uh, spike some more uh, energy into there. There we go. And uh, so yeah, like I said, at this point I can put this whole thing into the uh, microwave upstairs and uh, give this thing a try in there and hopefully this will run just like you see here in that microwave. And if it does, that will be exciting and I'll continue to, uh, to work on this little circuit, you know, and try to get it made up so that it can go into the Tesla torch lights. Anyway, this is probably the messiest uh, circuit I have built. You know, I just went to town on this. I don't have a lot of time right now, but I am really excited. I've never had uh, LEDs running like that off such a little electrolytic capacitor. And this just goes to show that you really do not need super capacitors. You don't have to, uh, you know, cheat and put a super capacitor with electrolytic, you know, wrapper around it or hidden batteries or any of that stuff. You know, I get all these comments on the SGR looper circuits saying that I've got a hidden battery in the circuit. Uh, if this thing works in the Faraday cage, I'm going to send uh, some of these circuits out to others for testing and verification. But I just don't see that it's necessary to cheat. And I'm not even worrying about this circuit uh, as far as energy in versus energy out. I'm just gonna put this right into use with the Tesla Torch flashlights. And uh, that is my plan. So yeah, let's go test this in the uh, Faraday cage and see what happens. All right, so getting ready to do the first test in the microwave here. The microwave is unplugged. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, energize the circuit. There we go, circuit is running. Haha, <laughs> what do you know folks? <laughs> Look at that, little 470 microfarad electrolytic capacitor in the microwave. The variable air capacitor was the, uh, the secret. So I had to be able to measure the capacitance off that and uh, get a capacitor at the right size. And uh, once we get that set up and dialed in, I should uh, be able to get this over and into some practical Tesla torch type applications. But, uh, you know, that, that is some good news to see that running in the microwave like that. So it is not external energy, you know, I have no exciters, I've got no high frequency uh, circuits running around here anyway, and I kind of had a hunch that this would work in a Faraday cage, but very nice to, uh, to see the proof like that. So. Anyway, I am encouraged. Okay, so I've got the circuit hooked up here to the scope. And what I've got right now is I've got my probe connected to the base of the transistor. And it's also connected to the negative over here across the electrolyte capacitor. Now I've got to say, it runs down the circuit a lot faster. And it's also not as bright uh, with that connected. So let me show you what I mean. When I disconnect that, you can see it's brighter. But when I connect it up, it dims down a little bit. But I can go ahead and show you uh, the waveform and what's going on here. You can see, uh, I guess what people are calling the picket fence type effect, which has been very typical of all the SGR looper circuits. Coming in here more, see if I can get this to stabilize a little bit on some of this ringing. You can see the ringing as it curves up the slope. Again, very typical of the SGR looper circuits. So really nothing uh, strange or surprising in the waveform on this one other the other, over the other ones. I don't think you, I think you could get the exact same waveform on a scope and have a circuit that did not perform at all like this, in other words. So this really has to do with the winding ratio, the geometry, the SGR circuit itself, and the addition of this germanium diode. Okay, so I went ahead and hooked up the circuit with a uh, 
little hand crank generator like I use on the Tesla torch flashlights. And I just want to show the effect of a uh, flashlight type circuit with this using electrolytic capacitors. On the previous Tesla torches, I was using as super capacitors. They take a lot longer to charge. Now you can see the voltage on the capacitors rising here. It's at half a volt now, and that's because it was fully charged and I just completely shorted it out here with my knife. So there's some dielectric absorption bringing that voltage up. But let me go ahead and charge it here and check out the charge time. So here we go. 1,000. So basically one second of charging brought this up to 11 volts. And <laughs> that is, uh, that's just the nature of electrolytic capacitors, you know. I've got a larger electrolytic back here. This is the same original 470 microfarad here. And this is a 10 volt electrolytic capacitor, so I don't really want to go up in voltage that high above 10 volts. And you can see it, it's going to be dropping back down to the 10 volt range now. But this just gives you some kind of an idea about how attractive this is in a flashlight. Because to be able to charge, you know, just instantly like that, and then have your lights run on, you know, it just makes a great setup. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add some resistance at the same point that I have the uh, resistor on the SJR Looper Circuit version 3. If you go to laserhacker.com and look at V3 of the circuit, I have resistance between the positive on the capacitor and the base of the uh, transistor. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some resistance at those points and you can see the LEDs get brighter as I add that resistance. Whoa, that you don't even wanna look at that, that's so bright. I added too much resistance there and it jumped into a different level. And I was shooting to get down to 10 volts, we got down to nine. And you, know, you can see it rising again, that's just dielectric absorption. And you know, also I should point out that this meter connected to the circuit is also discharging these capacitors. So let me bring this back up to 10 volts. Okay. And uh, let me go ahead and see if I can get some dry skin on these and play with this uh, resistance here a little bit. And it's so easy to, to add too much. Yeah, I'll just have to get a potentiometer on here. I'm running out of time uh, to do any more in the circuit today. I've made a lot of improvements. Very, very happy with it. And uh, definitely is, has some serious flashlight potential now, as you can see. It, it's throwing the light around. <laughs> anyway, I will uh, Continue to explore and experiment and uh, share my findings. <laughs>